Why are we so ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is it about the gospel of Jesus Christ that makes us so timid? Why are we so easily to talk about sports or cars or the weather? But when it comes to our faith, we can't seem to do it. I don't quite understand this. It's like a phenomenon that happens between a person of faith and an unbeliever or someone that they don't know. It's a question mark. And immediately everything gets tense. Immediately they start to sweat, hands get clammy, and they don't want to do it. Why? Why don't we want to do it? Let's read the Word. Let's go to the Word. Uh, Philippians 1, middle of verse 18. Follow with me, would you? Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ that will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be all ashamed, at all ashamed, but with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Courage. To be courageous. To not back down in the face of change, in the face of open uh, rebuke or, or things that might shift in your social environment. But we're very timid, especially here in the West. I was asking a friend yesterday, why have we stopped making converts? It would seem as though the church was always going out and always making converts. And then as they would make converts, they would bring them back to the, to the church and the church would grow and the Lord would, as the Lord would allow it. But now as though we've seen as we've stagnated. And I wonder if it's because people are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they become cowards. And we don't share the good news anymore. Is it that people don't need to hear good news anymore? Is that why? There's a whole bunch of people out there. They're just all filled up with good news and they don't need no more. They're all good. No, I think it's the opposite. I think they're all filled up with bad news. If you've ever tuned into any of the news stations we have here in America, that's where you get your fill of bad news. No, I think people need some good news. And as Paul says here, to live is Christ, to die is gain. We shouldn't be unashamed. We should be unashamed of the gospel because we are living our life for Christ. Our life should be an example of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It shouldn't be something that we have to go out of our way to say all the time. People should be able to look at us and say, there's something different there. There's something different there. But we shrink. We shrink from it. Why? There's nothing they can do to us that hasn't already been done to Christ. And what does the Bible say? Don't fear the one that can kill the body and after that not do anything. No, fear the one that can kill the body and then the soul and take it and throw it into hell. And we are commanded to share the good news. Go into all the world and preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're commanded to do so. I think partly we care too much about what people think. We value how people view us much more than we value how God views us. And that is terrifying because those people can't save you. God can save you. And you care more about what they think of you than you care about what God thinks about you. Now, what's wrong with that? Are we Christian? Are we soldiers of the cross? Are we advancing a kingdom? Or are we shrinking back just so Bob, Tammy, and Joe over there may not think of us you know, as highly as they used to? What's the reason? Why don't we share the good news anymore? So as we read this, and as we reflect on what Paul says, I think one of the bigger things is, 
waiting for the eager expectation. I'm eager, I'm waiting eagerly for the expectation that Christ will do what he said he was going to do. And while I wait, and I hope, I'm going to share the good news so that others can have this hope that I have. I have this hope. I have this foundation. And people say, hey, look, I've got the, I've got it. I, I mean, I hope they find it somehow, some way. But I don't, I, I mean, I can bring them to church and maybe they'll get it that way. Or I can bring them to a Bible study. Maybe they can get it that way. And you know, what do all those things have in common? They are literally taking the person that you're talking about out of that environment that you should be witnessing to them in and placing them in a different environment where they're not as comfortable, where, they, where, where things aren't as familiar, where you wouldn't have as much of an impact, where they're more guarded, and you're hoping that the, the word gets through to them there. No, you go where they are, where you meet them at work, at school, and you bring the gospel there. You don't hope the preacher is preaching about sin and repentance and you bring him in and you're like, boy, I hope they hit them with the good stuff today. And lo and behold, it's <laughs> they're talking about money or eldership. Not that there's anything wrong with talking about those, but that's not why you wanted to bring them today. You wanted them to hit them hard, give them the good stuff. Why can't you do that? Why can't you give them the good stuff? Why can't you convict them of sin? Why can't, why can't you do those things? What is it about us that makes us so timid? There's an entire generation of people that don't know how to be Christians. That's why. These new fandangled churches, the lack of training in the home, it is a disaster. It is an equation of disaster for the children that are now growing up. My generation and below. No one knows how to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And we're so comfortable getting things second and third hand. We don't want to go get it ourselves. That's why we're ashamed. Because we don't know. We're ashamed that we're going to get it wrong. Well, I would talk to him, but I, uh, I don't quite know what I believe. Uh-oh. What do you mean you don't know? That's a big problem. Well, I, I, I need to study the word more because what if they ask me a question that I don't know? What does it matter? The basics. I'm talking about the basics. Not the difference between Calvinism and Armenianism. Which, whatever, to those. Let's just talk about Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection. Forgiveness of sin. Repentance of sin. Confession of sin. Acknowledging you're a sinner. I mean, those things are very basic. Can we not talk about those? Let's go on. 2 Timothy 2.15. Let's go there. Oop, went too far. Oop, no, I didn't. Second Timothy 2.15. I am a mess. I am trying to get there. Come on. Here we go. 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. My goodness, does that not encompass what we need? Why don't you need to be ashamed? Because you're a worker who's rightly handling the truth. That's the encompassing thing, right? You're, you're very confident in what you're talking about because you are consistently in the word of truth so that you can handle it properly when you're on the job. Somebody is very effective with a hammer when they've worked with it and dealt with it and done all kinds of things with it over years and they're very effective. They hit the nail on the head every time and they drive the nail straight. They know what they're doing because they handle that hammer. That hammer is an extension of them. Same should be the word for us. That word should be an extension of us. Actually, it should be an extension of Christ that we're bringing to people. 
Why aren't we, why, why don't we need to be ashamed? Because we're handling it correctly. Well, how do we handle it correctly? We get in it. There you go. Good night. <laughs> we, we, we get in it. I think that's probably the biggest part of why people don't share the word because they don't know the word. How can you share something you don't know? Okay. I read a Joel Olstein book, so I feel like I got a little bit, or I read a, uh, you know, I, I listened to, you know, Charles Stanley one time on TV, so I feel like I'm a little better. All the, what does it matter? First of all, don't listen to Joel. I'm just going to give you that right now. Um, second of all, come on, get in the word. There's too many options out here to get into it. If you don't want to sit down and read it, put it on your car, audio that thing, but get in there so that you can get in the work with us. It's so tiring to see people on the stands going, we are so thankful you're doing what you're doing. And we're out on the field going, please help. There's too much work. There's too much to do. We're tired. We need help. And people are just like, you're doing great, but we're not coming because we're not quite sure what to do or if we really want to be a part of this. And then the people in the field just go weep somewhere because we need help. Why? It occurs to me that not only are people ignorant of the word, so they're ashamed of it because they don't think they can correctly handle it, but they're very content not knowing the word. Boy, that's our culture, isn't it? That's our culture. Just give me just enough. I, I just want to know just enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cliff notes that thing for me, please. Is there any way that you can shorten it up, package it up, and give it to me in 30 minutes or less? Just so I don't have to go to hell. That, that's all I want to know. I don't want to, have, I don't want to go to hell. Nobody wants to go to hell. Package that thing up for me. Give it to me. I'll consume it. And we're good to go. And they're, and they're lost. We could send them to a million churches that could package it up in the gold leaf and everything. And they could make it really nice for them. And they would consume it. They would have a false sense of security. They would walk out twofold sons of hell because they are now thinking they are right with the Lord when they're not. What have we done? What have we done here in America? What have we become? Have we truly shared with the next generation what it means to be a Christian? Or are we so content and too busy with our day-to-day -day lives that we can't spend 30 minutes in the word so that we could give that to somebody else. Is that too much? That's too much, right? We live in a fast paced world and that's just, time is money, time is commitment. You may have to give up something. Hold that thought. Let's go to our last piece of scripture tonight. Let's go to Luke 9, 26. I want you to hold that thought, okay? If that's you, Luke 9, 26. So, like I said, hold that thought. Luke 9, 26. Actually, I'm going to read up to verse 25 and then down to 26. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself or his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Uh-oh. Remember that thought that I told you to hold on to? How does it feel now? What will it profit you at the end? That you made everybody like you. That everybody loved you. What will it profit you then? When the one that you had to be ashamed of for others to like you is now the one that you stand in front of and you look to his right 
And there stands our high priest, our intercessor. And the only thing on your mind in that moment is, please speak on my behalf. Please speak on my behalf. Please, oh Lord, please speak on my behalf. And the only thing that's going to flash in your brain in that moment is how many times did I push you into my pocket when you were calling out by the Spirit to share me with others? I took you and I stuffed you away because I was ashamed of you. And in that moment, it will be a staunch, grievous realization when Christ looks at you in your moment of need and says, I, I, I don't know that person. Because aren't those the same words that you said when you were living? Aren't you a Christian? Uh, I mean, I mean uh, not really. So, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes I am. On Easter and Christmas, I go with my mom. How do you think that's going to shake out for you? You're going to be standing there. He's your only hope. And you were ashamed of him on the earth. That's a scary place to be. And I don't want any of you to be in that place where he looks down from being seated by the right hand of the father and says, I don't know that person. As a matter of fact, I'm rather ashamed that they even call themselves one of mine because they're not. No, no, that person's a, an imposter. The only person that person fooled was themselves. No, Father, I don't know him or her. Please don't let that be you. Don't live your life unashamed of him that can save you. One day we'll all stand before a great and mighty God and our only hope is Jesus Christ. Live unashamed of the cross of Jesus Christ and proclaim his name in this culture that hates him. Proclaim it to them. So on that very day, it will stand witness against them that they had people in their midst that were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with all of you. And if you don't know him, repent of your sins and turn to him. For he is there and there is still time. Guys, I love you. And like always, God bless.